Hey, a pleasant good morning, everybody. This is Sports Line News. I'm Joe Boric, and I hope every Royals fan is doing great as the first step to this season is complete. The Royals clinch a playoff spot, one of the earliest, if not the earliest, clinch in Royals history. Not exactly sure on the timing there, but it's definitely one of the earliest clinches, if not the earliest, due to the fact that the team we're going to be playing this weekend, the Trois Riviere Lions, take care of business 5-3. to three. Over the Maine Mariners, Maine had a Patrick Shea score two goals. A Trois Riviere had Mantell, a Forden, Welsh, a Motnami, who we don't like at all, and a Nealis score as well. So Trois Riviere was able to get it done for us, and then hopefully we're able to take, as I said, on the Royals uh, radio show today at the Railroad House with Eric that I really thank him for allowing me to be on. Hopefully we're able to take two out of three this weekend because that would be realistic because as our great announcer Eric Jesperger pointed out, we haven't beat them in back-to-backs yet. And they're a team that are sputtering a bit now as a new team uh, in the league, kind of like the similar to the Chicago Bulls in baseball. They started off great, had the high high, and then started going low and haven't really kind of made their way back up uh, from the low. Uh, but maybe... For them, we hope not, though, as we're playing them this weekend. That will be the start for them uh, in the main game. But I don't think it will be because our Royals, and this is the key to this team, too, and their high success this season, is they never have sputtered for a long period of time. They looked like they were sputtering a bit at the back end of an 8-10, and 10, which is understandable for how gas guys are going to be. And then they come out and play their best 60 when they should be the most gas of the season. That's what this team does, and that's what they did on Sunday against the Wooster Railers, and then by winning that game, it put them in position as long as somebody in the main game and the Trois Riviere game won in regulation, then it was over. They clinched the playoff spot, and now it's about being able to stay above Newfoundland, which ain't going to be easy with how good Newfoundland's playing, but we're also playing well and are done with this 8-10 and 10 crap and now get to move on and play against Trois Riviere, move on to play after Trois Riviere, a game against Adirondack. And then play after Anirondack, we get to play Maine. So I think the Royals have a schedule that they can take advantage here of. Now it's just about taking advantage of it. Uh, After Maine, they have the Anirondack Thunder again, and then that rounds out the season. So it's literally just taking advantage, taking care of business, as the song says, and being able to round this out here because the Royals definitely have an effective schedule in terms of they should be able to take care of business with how good this team is and how clean they can play through 60. If they play through 60 like they did on Sunday, they'll be fine going through and through, and they should take two out of three. Um, in Trois Riviere, they should be obviously good in the next final three of the season, that one game on the Wednesday and then the final two of the season against Adirondack, plus the final four against the main Mariners because the Royals, as we've seen all season, are better than all the teams they're going up against. Newfoundland, <clears throat> I haven't got a chance to look at their schedule, but I will uh, pull it up here uh, real quick. The Newfoundland Growlers, they play, as we're going to pull this up here, but but as, as I'm pulling that up, I'll talk about the success stories of our Reading Royals as well. I mean, Kirk McDonald talked about it on the radio show today, but how good they formed this team, and if you want to check that out on a mixer, you can... Uh, check out the radio show, but how good they formed this team with youngsters, guys that are newer in the league, like the Kenny Housingers of the world, Pritchard's in his emerging years, the Brad Morrisons, who are very good of the world, uh, but also have Trevor Gooch, who might still be a youngster in terms of league years, like Eric McDonald said, but obviously has experience, and has experience uh, playing in other leagues as well, in other pro leagues. And then you bring in guys like Garrett McFadden, who become great for this team. You had guys at the beginning of the season, like Stromer, who played really well and now has had success with the Phantoms and could potentially be back for a playoff run. Who knows? Dominic Cormier had such great success, he got recognized by Laval and is now going to be back with us uh, for the trois Riviere series. So this team was formed immensely great and then they kept adding more jam throughout the season Jared Branch a great guy that can bring more physicality as you're getting into postseason moments we know Brady and Lowe can bring that we obviously know Frank the Tank Pachara brings that and then uh, Gooch can even do it as well they have a beautiful scoring uh, with Bykoff, Gooch, Pritchard, Ebbing, Morrison, Deshara and Lowe and then the guys that chip in as the scores Hosinger, um, Cressy as well 
Mason Millman has been getting more effective as time goes on. Obviously, he had injuries and stuff he had to get through. Now that he's through that, he's been more effective each day, and he's got consistency getting to stay with the Royals. And I actually think that is the right decision for Mason Millman, getting to stay down there the entire season. Um, and I think that is the right spot for him because he gets consistency and he gets to stay in the right system and with the best coach in the organization and Kirk McDonald as well. But this team, the key stars of the team are Jacob Pritchard, Tomas Ebbing, Patrick Bykov, Morrison Lowe, Dechara. I'm just going to do a top 10. Cormier, McNally, uh, Millman. And then at that point, you can't really... <laughs> I, I guess... Um, you obviously have to put yeah, if you have to put Trevor Gooch in there and they're saving the best for last, but you can't really even do a top ten because this team is just so deep. With most teams when I do my videos and I was like, do a top ten guys, those would be the top ten guys, but most guys on this team, like the Garrison Sears of the world, even Jared Brandt with how good he played, um, those guys are gonna be on other teams' top ten uh lists, and that's for damn sure. Even Cooper on other teams when he would get more consistent playing time with how good he is and not have not played in a handful of the games, uh, he would be on a top 10 list. I mean, this team is filled with depth, and now they added more depth as well in Seller, um, in Carlson, and Kirkup, that it just continues to grow. And who knows if they're even done, obviously, as a trade deadline we're right on the brink of. But who knows if the Royals are done as well. It'll be interesting to see. But this team is loaded in depth. That's the key to the season. They play. When they play their best hockey, they're one of the best teams through 60. They truthfully are. When they play their best hockey like they did on that Sunday. And we know this group has a great rallying power. They got great team chemistry. They got um, guys that have the great energy. And then they got the guys that are like Bykoff that are Mr. Humble. So I think this team perfectly mixes and gels, and I think this team definitely has a chance to make a Kelly Cup run. But in conclusion, as we wrap up this playoff, Royals making the playoffs for their step run videos. I ran a little bit long here. The Newfoundland Growlers, their schedule for the rest of the season, they're going to take on Wooster, who is better than any of the teams we're playing for the rest of the season. The Cincinnati Cyclones, and the Cyclones are 33-27, and 27, so that's not an easy... Um, for them, and then they take on Maine and Anaronda. So I would say Newfoundland definitely has a tougher schedule. They're taking on Wooster for three, the Cyclones for three, who are a pretty solid team, and then Maine and Anaronda, who are not the best teams in our division. So I would say the Royals, again, take care of business. They should have the division because the Newfoundland Growlers definitely have the superior schedule, where the Royals have the inferior schedule. This has been the latest edition of the Royal Take. As we looked over the star players, we gave a top 10, but this team isn't a top 10. It's a top everything because they're so formed through and through. And then you have guys that haven't consistently played, like Shenner. Mike Shen's played amazing whenever he's called upon. So there's all of that as well. You got Logan Flodell, who came in later. Obviously, Cruz Domenko was fantastic this year. Now Flodell's the guy. So obviously, all of that factors in as well. Pat Nagel was amazing, went down as well. So all of these guys factored, and even Cam Strong, who was here for a bit, Josh Winkers went healthy. They were great for the team, and they played a huge factor in the season. They're just now elsewhere, and we wish them all the best success. But this has been the latest edition of the Royal Tape. Please to subscribe down below. I'm involved with these wishes to keep the channel growing to 215 or more by the end of March. Really appreciate you guys' love and support. Go Royals. We're in the playoffs, baby. Now it's time to win the division. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.